Hey guys, it's me again, Bones with the Foot and Nose Podcast. And um, today's video, I'm going to be talking about digesting and trying to make sense of a very difficult out of character result at Crystal Palace. Two um, possibilities to do at left back for Arsenal uh, with Quarantini out for the season. And then three. Um, Thomas Partey and the possibilities of what the midfield um, solutions could be and um, and then we'll see where we are at the end it shouldn't be too long um, so let's get right into it Crystal Palace 3 Arsenal nil. that was a very difficult thing to to live through to be honest as a, as a fan and as a person who loves uh, the club it's just like a really really hard one to, to, to make sense of hence I, I gave myself some time to react and listened extensively to some podcasts and read a little bit. And most most people, that first 24 hours, I think, felt terrible. And then as you get distance from these things, it normally happens. You start to, to digest, especially after another watch of the game. And you're like, wow, the, the performance was bad, but it wasn't as bad as it, as bad as it felt during the, the, the actual game itself. Um, and I guess it's because, you know, at this time of the season, everything becomes so magnified. Uh, a win feels that much more and a defeat the same. And like, I'm just remembering the last two results, Arsenal lost at Palace and won at Villa. The Villa win was immense and it felt like that. You saw the scenes at the end of the game between the fans and the, and the, and the, and the players. And at, at Palace, the fans were actually pretty good about supporting the team and being really um, encouraging towards the boys and singing Ateta's name. Um, even in the 90th minute, they were still singing. However, problem is that the the result is not something that you can make sense of it because it's so out of the blue, you know. And um, we can't basically properly make sense of this result until we've seen the team play again over the next two to three weeks in my opinion because Brighton happened and people you know at, the, at that time um, rightfully you know went mad because you know the, the season hadn't started well as well and it was too close to that you know to that Etihad Stadium performance the Brighton game however the team went on another run, and then there was Everton and Man United, you know, in a short space of time, Man United first. And then the team went on another run, a really good run, which was halted by a City loss, um, you know, at the beginning of January, beginning of the year. And then went on another run after the Burnley. There was a City loss and a draw to Burnley. And then we had another really good run of, like, a lot of wins. I mean, the, this was at Palace actually the first loss um, in after five away wins, five straight away wins. So this loss to Palace comes, you know, within that context. And yes, Arsenal did lose to Liverpool, but the loss itself, like, it's it's hard to make sense of it because too many players play below their level, and this is one of those, in my opinion, instances where. I don't want to make a pattern out of something that happened on that particular night because the pattern has been the team has a result that's like this and then has several results that are positive. And so let's see if the boys will be able to do something similar after that game. You know, like I really had to wait and process a lot of the feelings. If I was recording this video on Monday night or Tuesday morning, I would not have been saying what I'm saying right now. So, like, it's been a really hard one. But then, the difficulty for me for the night was basically losing both Thomas Partey and Kieran Tierney. Tierney's loss is one that's more nonsensical because he didn't need to be played for 90 minutes in both of those friendlies for Scotland. And um, the Scotland um, manager, Steve Clark, for some reason... I don't know if he had never seen Kieran Tierney play. I mean, this is ridiculous what he did, to be honest. And Kieran Tierney is that kind of player who, when called upon by either his club cl club side and definitely by his country, he's a very proud Scot Scottish uh, man. And um, 
he will always play for Scotland. You know, with one leg, he will play for Scotland. So this is where I think the manager needed to have earned his money, in my opinion, by sitting him down. Just like, hey, KT, sorry, man. Like, you know, with your track record, especially in the last three or so years, we can't risk it. There's an important um, playoff game between Ukraine and Scotland that they still need to qualify and secure qualification, sorry, for, for the World Cup. And now Kieran Tierney probably misses that and definitely misses the rest of the Arsenal season. So that one was nonsensical. And then Thomas Partey played two very important qualifying games. You know, the travel plus the intensity of those games, emotionally, physically, mentally, I'm sure, you know, there was an element of fatigue in him, you know, by the time he came back to Arsenal. He got hurt in the game. We were already 3-0 down. Like, that, that, that can happen. But, and no one can begrudge him for wanting to play for Ghana in meaningful games. Um, KT's one, for me, is harder to take. And, you know, especially with his injury um, record. And if there were two players, most Arsenal fans, if you had to bet, like, which two players are most likely to get injured? In this Arsenal team, it's Partey and, and, and Tierney. They probably would be on most people's top two, top three players if people had to make a bet. So so what next? Um, you know, especially after Tavares didn't make a good showing on, 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 on Monday. Again, his showing was not as bad as it looked um, initially. But I think the fact that he got hooked made um, people read a little bit more into the game. So when I watched it again, I mean... He's definitely at fault, you know, partially for both goals, the first two goals. Um, but I think Gabriel and, and a few other people should share a portion of the blame for both of those goals. Um, Gabriel probably doesn't need to dive in for the second goal. And then in the, set, in the first goal, he mistimes um, the flight of the, of, the, of the ball and obviously... I think Nuno either expected him to hit the ball or whatever the hell Nuno was doing, it, it's unclear to me. Um, he might maybe, he might possibly argue that he was fouled. I, I don't know what the fuck was going on with that one between him and Anderson for that first goal. Um, but in that first goal, before the free kick, like Ben White fouls Zaha whilst he's facing away from the Arsenal goal in a very, very ridiculous um, circumstance. Um, so it didn't need to do that, but there we go. The, the, the way for me, I think Arteta, um, should try and deal with this is either keep Nuno and Cedric, but push him further up and play a back three for, you know, just for survival's sake. I know Arteta hasn't used the back three much, except for when he was chasing a few games this year and definitely at Etihad, you know, where it didn't work out very well. Um, the other times he's used it was before he started consistently playing with a back four when he couldn't trust, you know, either Mustafi and Luis and a few other defenders he had when he first came to Arsenal. But more and more, he has trusted his defenders. So if he wants to, you know, give Nuno a run in the team and, and use every single available player in this very thin squad we have, um, then play, play a back four or... If you're going to play back four, sorry, back three, sorry, you know, and Nuno and Cedric, you keep both. If you're going to play a back four, you probably pay, want to play one of your center halves um, as, a, as a fullback. So, in my opinion, if you want to keep Nuno, um, which would be harsh on Cedric, play Ben White at right back, play Holding and Gabriel as a two, and Nuno at left back. That way, at least you have a right back that's kind of conservative that can come inside, and Nuno can go and attack um, up the left flank. Um, or similarly, you can maybe rest Nuno and use him as a further up front player as a substitution um, for either Martinelli or, or Smith Rowe as, a, you know, as an attacking option on the left side. That way you can then play either Gabriel or Granit Xhaka as a conservative left back. I don't like the Xhaka option or Saka option to be quite honest, but I could see maybe Gabriel playing um, as a left back in a similar way that Ben White has played as a right back, not overlapping, just kind of coming in and making a back three when we have the ball, but be a conservative, um, protective left back so that um, on the other side you can have Cedric attacking and going upfield. 
So I don't know what people think about that. I think that one would probably work out better. Like the option of if you want to keep it back four, um, use one of the center backs, one of the two mobile center backs, not holding, um, and use them as a cover, you know, fullback um, in a quasi back three situation. But they start in a four so that, you know, you can keep most of the shape looking like it has been for most of the, you know, this season. And then with with Thomas Partey gone, it leaves another situation to be solved in the in the midfield. And in my opinion, I think it should be Xhaka plus one. You know, double pivot um, because I don't think there's another player who can hold the midfield on his own like Partey has been able to in this Arsenal team. Um, you could gamble with Xhaka by himself with Sambi on the left side or is Emil Smith Rowe on the left in a three, but I think. You may be asking too much, and you may be changing too many different things um, again for some of these players. So, Sambi, when he played, he played mostly in a double pivot. I would, I would try that. Um, so, Sambi with Jaka or or El Nene with Jaka for some games, depending on you know level of experience, game state, opponent, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the other option would be to just play Emil Smith Rowe um, next to Granit Xhaka and play, you know, kind of like a 4-2-3-1 or 4-4-2 kind of thing where, you know, Smith Rowe can play as a box-to-box -box number eight next to Xhaka and Xhaka can be more of a six, um, but it's a, it's a double pivot. Like Smith Rowe plays from deep because he's got the legs, the boy, you know, like Aaron Ramsey used to do that for Arsenal actually. You know, playing in a you know in a four two three one, but like he was, he had a bit more license to roam. Um, and then if you have Jaka sitting, and then a conservative uh, fullback, you still have enough cover there, right? Like if you're playing with Gabriel at left back or Ben White um, at right back, you would still have three defenders in you know holding Gabriel and and Ben White, and then Bakrani Jaka still you know holding it down. That's four. So it could be like. Um, that could be a protection, you know, if you're playing with Smith Rowe or, you know, like who, who that is the next best player on the, on the bench in a way. Um, but I, I, that one for me would be a bit of a, if you want to go helter skelter and chase games, I think Sambi should probably get, um, the big, the big nod because he's the first guy who has been, um, I guess play bought, brought in, in the summer to play this particular role, you know, in the case of Xhaka being injured or Pate being injured. Um, I don't know what you guys think. I'd be curious to see uh, what you think Arsenal should do moving forward, starting with the game against Brighton on Saturday. Um, that's Those are my thoughts. I think, I think, you know, try not to change the shape too much. You know, either do a three, a back three, or, or more possibly do the back four the way Ateta has been doing it and just... Um, ask people to do the most comfortable jobs they can do, though. Like, so if you're going to play Nuno, don't play him and Cedric on the other um, on the other side. Play one of the two because at least you still have some cover. And then the 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 more attacking, those two guys need to be the more attacking, overlapping uh, fullback when they play, not to have them both. Unless you're going to play a double pivot, that and then be conservative that way. And maybe you can make it work that way. You play both of them in a back four, but then you have setters in midfield. In the case of like Partey being absent, it would be Xhaka and El Neni, in my opinion, or Xhaka and uh, Sambi. But don't move Xhaka at left back because that makes you weaker in, in midfield. All right. We're happy to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I'm going to pause this one here. Cheers.